Hello, I'm Richard Voves, the Bald Explorer, out on another, well, walk and exploration today. I am, looks like the inside workings of a clock, a giant clock, but it isn't, it isn't that. I am in Shropshire and I am at a very iconic place. To help me explore this very iconic place is a gentleman called Lee Proudfoot. He's here. Hello, Lee. Hello, Richard. We are standing underneath a particularly important bridge, are we, we are not? Indeed, yep. This we is the Iron Bridge. The Iron, the Iron bridge. bridge. The oldest Iron Bridge in the world. And I've, uh, we're, we're here, 1779 it was constructed. And it's just gone through a major conservation project. Has it? And that's what I was working on last year. And that's why I'm here today. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking right. us around. We are standing completely underneath it. Of course, from here, you don't appreciate um, its wonderful artistic uh, look. We're beside the River Severn. For right. those that uh, are not familiar, it's, it's, this area is called now the Iron Bridge Gorge. It is, yep. But <clears throat> prior to the Iron Bridge, it, it, of course, it wasn't anything to do with Iron Bridge because it had never been invented. Indeed, it was called Colbrookdale before that. So Colbrookdale. On the side of the bridge it says this bridge was built in Colbrookdale and people get confused thinking that it was all constructed in what we now call Colbrookdale. Yes. But the whole area was known as Colbrookdale and then it became Iron Bridge as the bridge became uh, the centre of a new community with new shops and hotels and inns and uh, places to spend money. Yes, and this place in its day, in, in, its, in its heyday in the 18th century yeah. there was um, the centre of British uh, or English um, iron industry. And it was indeed, it was the, the most intensively industrial valley in, in the world at the time and it maintained its kind of primacy right the way through to the middle of the 1800s and other areas then became more important. Let's take a little stroll indeed. and explore. So um, I know you've worked out a, a vague route for us a to have a look. As We're going to go up. We can. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're near Telford, aren't we? The the new town of Telford, just so that people can, uh, who really have no idea where we are, that's right, can uh, put it Iron, on the map. Iron Bridge in the Severn basically is the bottom edge of Telford. If you imagine it as the river front for the town, everything of Telford is above us, and we're surrounded by Shropshire. And uh, yes, the, the this is a really busy place at weekends. It's full. Of, it's where everyone goes on a Sunday. Lots of people come from the Black Country, from Wolverhampton and Birmingham and visitors also come from all over the world and all over the UK um, as they have done since the bridge was built. I mean um, there are records and diaries and drawings and images that people created having visited here from the 1770s when the bridge was being constructed and it's been visited ever since and it's always been a bit of a tourist hotspot. The thing is when you again and now I've often spoken about this when you come to a place like this we look at it now as a showcase yeah and everything's very clean, everything's very proper yeah. and actually it's quite hard to imagine yeah. what it was like when it was really being worked because looking at the old pictures it was a bit of a grubby place. It was described by various visitors as being like hell <laughs> and they described it as Hades and the River Severn as being like the River Styx. Because of it, the, I mean Hades because it, it of the furnaces that pollution, are Pollution, there were furnaces everywhere, heaps of coal being burnt turned into coke you had furnaces running 24 hours, both the large scale ones and also ad hoc ones as well. Lime kilns, ceramic works, all sorts of the associated industries as well. Um, and it really was not a particularly pleasant place to be. Um, no. The river has only really become a, a clean river and it's now full of lovely wildlife. We've got kingfishers and occasionally otters and other, other fish as well. Um, but it, it would have been a difficult place to grow and uh, to, to grow up in. It would have been a difficult place to live in. Very harsh conditions. Yeah. Behind us, as you can see there, the, the beautiful looking bridge, all elegantly restored yes. and, and, and everything else. We're going to take a walk across Indeed, it, aren't we? we? Are. Shall we we'll go up the bank. Shall we do that? We're coming up um, towards the, the road here that skirts along the River Severn and yes. through these wonderful Georgian buildings that we see here again a lot of them <laughs> tourist shops gift uh, shops gift shops, shops and coffee but, shops uh, but they make a living so that's important absolutely so. <laughs> but of course and there's always been the case you know the hotel on your right hand side there the tontine that was built only four years after the bridge was constructed uh, and expanded very quickly you can see the change in color of the bricks on the right hand side it was originally a three bay building oh right 
The just, demand was so great it grew to five bays. So it was a money making exercise as much as anything. Yes. Um, it was a toll bridge from day one. Oh, was it? When it opened on 1st of January 1781, the first toll. And it was a toll bridge until the early 50s. Now, you told so, me that, um, that the bridge itself, I mean, it was put here because it was a way, it was a showcase. It was a showcase to show off what you could do with iron, particularly. Uh, partially, yes. Initially, it, it was also logistical reasons. There were raw materials on that side of the river that needed to get over here. But a lot of thinking is that it was essentially a marketing exercise. It was a demonstration of what you could do with the material. So cast iron, the technology of cast iron was being pushed further and further into different uses um, and people were trying to do new things with it all the time. So Abraham Darby III, who was the iron master around at the time, only 23 years old. 23. Yeah, the third generation of the Derby iron masters. Um, he underwrote the consortium to build this. So he underwrote it financially. Um, and his idea was it was essentially here to promote what his company could do with iron and hoped somewhat foolishly that lots of people would see this bridge and go can you build me another one to fill yes. my valley as well now it didn't really happen like that unfortunately the bridge came in at double the cost it was okay. uh, six thousand pounds final cost nearly bankrupted derby's business he had to get refinanced through um uh, through mortgages through the, the quaker communities that he was part of and um but it did pay off they the consortium actually paid were paid back and got their return on their investment within 12 years wow purely That's from the tolls going over tolls, because it was yeah. so popular yes as I said, people came here from all over the world there were industrial spies coming here from <laughs> sweden there were italian diplomats recorded as coming here uh, lots of people from germany because obviously the connection between england and germany at the time was very strong with the hanoverian connection right yes of um, course and to copy it and uh, unfortunately people copied it but didn't necessarily didn't go commission out, derby to build to, another one oh, for them but yes it's a, I mean, and now it is a, such an idyllic place with all the greenery that you can see. We're not filming on the best of days in terms of it's the weather, typical day. but we are <laughs> filming in the, the height of spring and all the trees and uh, the greenery have just blossomed, which is fantastic. Mm. And, and you see all the colour. But of course, back in the 18th century, a lot of these trees had gone. Let's go down to the water's edge on the Indeed. other side. Yeah. Is that ahead of us, the old toll house? It is. The, um, we believe that the actual original toll house is the one on the left. Oh, the right. one that's slightly leaning. If you ever look at the railings while we're here, yes. you can see how much the geology of the gorge has actually played a part on the structure. <laughs> how they, they don't line up with the uh, original fittings in the stonework. And that's a sort of a bit of the story of the whole bridge because of the way of its construction built as if timber but out of iron essentially they were using the knowledge they had which is how to make a timber bridge so when you when we get underneath you'll see how it's constructed it's constructed using woodworking joints so mortise joints tenon dovetail pegs and dowels oh yes do, do many people not come down here then they just many don't they don't know it's here they don't know it's here so here we are there's a little so, tip when i was working on the bridge last year during the conservation project we um did guided tours under and around the bridge and this is one of the places we brought people over the town's decline from sort of the late 1800s through to the 1960s 70s a lot of buildings were lost um, and demolished so what you see is a very green place which is very different to how it would have been for most of its life yes and that's oh, uh, sorry, and then that's that's what uh, is difficult sometimes. I think when people come here to appreciate. So here we are. This is the secret view that people don't get to yes. get to see With very the frequently. In the, the town the, in the yeah. background, which is probably more relevant to how it was meant to look in the first place, rather than that side looking over on the banks. It is an astonishing piece of engineering, and it's very beautiful in its own way and it seems a bit of a shame for uh, Abraham not to have um, made money from it. He did eventually. He did, oh, he it did cost eventually. him a fortune to do it. They got their money back within 12 years. Oh yes, you said, that's right. Um, but it did nearly bankrupt the company. Yes. It was what, nearly the end of sleepless it. Sleepless nights they must have had. As you said, it was a third generation in the family business, which is often the case. You know, yeah. The first one makes it, the second one uh, builds on it and the third one is the one that gambles away the, the family fortune but that wasn't the case being Quakers they wouldn't have gambled of course there's so much to see here um, and again in a little 
short video, uh, you know, you barely scratch the surface. And of course, people do come and they look at it and then they get back on the coach, as you say, and they <laughs> meander away. Yeah. Yet, this whole area has more to offer. So, I'm going to go on another walk um, and explore. And I think I'm going to come back several times because there's so much to see. There is. I may have to twist Lee's arm to help me on some of these. Yeah. But for the moment, Lee, thank you so much for You're showing welcome. us the bridge. You're welcome. And uh, don't forget to follow, like and subscribe and all the usual. And watch out for the other videos that will come from this part of the world. And if you get a chance to come, then do let me know. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think or if you've been. But in the meantime, thank you, Lee. Thank you. I'll see you on the next one. Till then, bye-bye.